from the homestead. If this is the first time you're visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very, very warm welcome. If you have been here before or you're a subscriber, welcome back. We appreciate you visiting again. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to build the day bed. And in our case, we're going to build it for a twin uh, size mattress, but you can build it for any size you want. I think a very big day bed will not look right, right? It will be just too, too deep. So probably twin is the most common size for, for a day bed. So as always, we're going to show you every step of the way. As always, we're going to try to use minimal tools. We are going to use power tools, but once again, you don't need to use power tools if you don't have them. We're using a simple four x four to build our legs. We're going to leave them in a four x four configuration, but you can easily put a nicer detail. We just like this style. So we're going to use a power tool. Again, you can do that with multiple cuts, even with a handsaw, and then knock it off. We've shown you in previous episodes how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. We are going to use a dado because we have one, and it will be faster, but definitely you don't need it. Even with a dado, we have to do multiple passes, right? right? We have set our fence to five and a half inches, which is the the width of the board that we're going to use as a, a sideboard, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can do this cut, even without a data blade, you will just need to make more passes. And actually, you can do the same process using a handsaw. Again, you make a lot of passes, and in a handsaw, because you cannot be as accurate, you just use a hammer to break the resulting uh, ears that you're going to create. And it is an, a fast way to do this without very specialized tools. Again, I'm using here my data blade because I have it. And as I just put on the screen, a sled will be the ideal tool to use here to make this cut more enjoyable and safer. It was a little iffy every now and then, primarily because my throat plate was not really the best plate. It's a little uh, below the surface and caused a little bit of problems during this cut. Here it becomes obvious why a sled will help. You can see that I slightly tilt the piece and it gives me a little uneven finish, which of course I'm going to finish up with a little bit of sanding later on, but the sled will make it perfect. Okay. And now we're going to do it on one other side too. You have a preference? Mm -hmm. During this step, you can remove any imperfections by on your 4x4 by choosing which size you're going to remove using your data stack or your hand saw. It is a great opportunity to make perfect ends. So that's what you want to remove? No. I was not very happy with these cuts, so, in a few moments you're going to see, I fix the issue. Whenever you're not happy with something, stop, make an adjustment, so your cuts will be both better in quality and safer. Do not push through a project if things do not feel right or they don't look good to you. So here's the first uh, leg that has been cut, and as you can see, it took quite a bit of the wood away. And so the idea is that the outside board, yep. This isn't the piece we're using, but this right. is how it will fit. And actually, it'll be the opposite way because this will be the this will be the outside, right? This will be the inside. So this is the face board. Ah, okay. It's going to come across here, and the other one will overlap it here, like okay. so, and go all the way to the end. Okay. But of course, it'll but be, of course, it'll be yeah. the full length here. Right. So you'll see a, the full, a full side here and an adjoining side here. Okay. Awesome. We found the first cut to be kind of challenging, and we improve because we want to be safe. We attach a little uh, extended fence on our uh, miter. Most miters have uh, two openings that you can attach with screws and auxiliary fence, right? This is a sacrificial fence. In other words, we're going to cut through it and we do not care. Right. But, it, but it will help support the board and that's yes. your, your goal here. Correct. This vastly improved our cuts. Not only it made them safer, but it felt better to do it and thus it increased the speed that we were working. This was a great idea and it worth the seconds that it took to attach a piece of scrap to our miter gauge and help us finish this project faster and safer. This first piece was the worst because it was moving on me, it was before we put the fence on and we needed some sanding to make it look better and as you can see, that improved it. It didn't make it perfect, but we could 
work a little more and make it more perfect. It was not really critical in this instance. This is not something you're going to see. In any case, some sanding would be necessary, especially if you're using a handsaw versus power tools. You will also see when I turn it around that any little remnants between your cuts are very easily knocked down using your sander and they present absolutely no problem in your final project. A sled here would have eliminated most of the imperfections and would have made our sanding much faster than what we actually had to take in the end. But in any case, a little bit of sanding will cover a lot of small mistakes. Since this is furniture, sanding is required because you do not want any rough surfaces. Whenever you want to finish something, especially since we are going to just clear coat this, you do not want it to look rough and you do not want it to feel rough. So spending some time to sand uh, furniture is very important. I am not a very big fan of sanding, but luckily Mrs. DIY does not mind it at all. I might actually say she enjoys it. You know, here goes, different strokes for different folks. I must admit I almost hate sanding, but she definitely doesn't mind it at all. As you can see in most of our episodes, it is Mrs. DIY that does most of the sanding for all our projects. It is a billion degrees here in North Carolina. So we moved the assembly indoors because we're both kind, both, all of the three of us, all, both the three of us, <laughs> Two billion degrees, you've lost some brain cells. Sweaty and stinky. <laughs> so we're going to show you the assembly process. We are finished. We have the four legs and we have the two sides and the, the front and the back, the head and the foot of the mm -hmm. assembly. Alright, so let's start. This is the top. Okay. So it would sit this way. So because we wanted uh, the edges of all the boards and the ends to be rounded to match the post boards, there are specific orientations for these boards, and so that's what we're getting lined up. We're using our new super duper clubs. Mm -hmm. This is an exact, a great example of why you need to dry fit things. First, you can check that your design is correct and that your fitment is correct. Always take time to dry fit before you connect pieces. Again, we always do that and it's a great practice. Now, we decided that we are going to use brackets to simplify the uh, assembly and also to allow us to disassemble it if we need to, right? Mm -hmm. No disassembly. No disassemble. Okay, that looks pretty tight to me. Does it look like you do? Okay. Okay. So using the brackets, we're attaching the, the sides to the front and the back, the, the head and the feet of the day bed. So our frame is assembled as you can see, and there are many ways to assemble this frame. You could use pocket screws, or you can use the brackets as we did. We chose brackets because they are easy, they are inexpensive, they were what, 99 cents a piece? Mm -hmm. And anyone can do it, right? All you need is a way to screw screws and the brackets and you have nice, nice corners. So the next step for our assembly will be to put the legs on the corners and see if they are lined correctly. One of the great advantages that you have with dry fitting is to make sure that the length and dimensions of your project are all correct. During our dry fitting, we found out that our legs were slightly longer than needed to be, so we cut them here to be flush with the sides of the day bed. Again, always try to be proud rather than short when you make your parts because it is very easy to cut a little bit of a wood off but much much harder to make it longer so dry fits are great to find any okay, mistakes so we have now attached the legs to the side supports we just used a singular screw on either side and we used it we built it that way so that it can be taken apart uh, for moving if needed 
and uh, it's looking pretty good so far, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to mark the, the length, so we can count it to length. This would be our ledger board. We'll cut it to that length and then we're going to rip it in half and that will make our ledger board. Right? Yep. So we're going to rip a two by three that we cut to the correct length in two and that will give us the two ledger boards. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is our next step. Okay, so here are our two ledger board, ledger boards, cut to the correct dimension. And what I suggest is that we make some pilot holes already here, so when we go in, it would be easier to put it on. Okay. So we're ready to attach our ledger, ledger board, and we use a couple of tricks for that. First, we we did pilot holes, and on each end and in the middle. We attach the screws already, which makes it easier for us to attach the ledger board, right? In addition, we use the thickness piece, uh, scrap of the, uh, the slats, is that what we call it? Slats, uh-huh. Because we want everything to be flat. This is a day bed, not a normal bed. And that allows us to, without measuring at all, to have a, a perfect fit for what we need. And Alpita is demonstrating here superior skill mm -hmm. in using a Ryobi. Having a couple of 2x4s always available is a great idea as we very often use them to make other pieces of wood that we needed for a project. In this instance, we transform a 2x4 into smaller boards that we use for the slides of the bed because we were too short. So simply by um, ripping it in half, we were able to avoid another trip to the to the box store that will add both cost and also time to our project. As you can see, this is a fairly simple process, but needs to be done in most table saws in two cuts, because usually the blade cannot reach all the way to the top of a two by four. Other than that, it's a pretty st pretty straightforward cut and cut us out of a bind. So 2x4s are probably the most versatile materials, right? We have made all kinds of different lumber using 2x4s. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a couple of more slats because we were short and we didn't want to go to the store. So the 2x4 right. worked beautifully for that. Mm -hmm. So here we've set a stop uh, so that we can cut the spacers uh, for in between the slats. And we need 20 of them, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. without having to measure every time. And here we are. We have our slats all installed and we cut, as we just showed you, a bunch of spacers, right? And like always, we had to improvise a little bit because uh, we didn't have all the material, we miscalculated. What were our sort of two boards? So it was not a horrible miscalculation, but there was a miscalculation, right? So we put spacers between those uh, slots to make it easy. Again, this is designed to be uh, easy to move, right? Disassemble and put away. 
So the spacers will make it easy for us every time we put it away to put the slots in the same position. And repeat that, what are we using to? What are we using? Bread. You know, you like this bread thinner. Usually you use the electric one. Yeah. <coughs> I like tools that work. We only have tools that work. Yeah. If you do not have a brad nailer, you can also use a hot glue gun here. There is no structural support. All you need is for those spacers to stay in place. So any way to attach them will work fine. Do not have to worry about it. And as you can see, the day bed is almost ready. We need to... Uh, we like the whisk here, so we'll probably put a clear finish on it, right? But definitely you can stain it, you can paint it, whatever you want. Yeah. For this in particular, because it's got some interesting coloring even to it, natural coloring, it mm -hmm. might be nice just to clear coat it, but... Yeah, I think that's the plan. Atlas is like, what's happening? James, too. I'm not a fan. And just in time for the pieces on the top. On the top we end up with uh, half a piece, which is okay, I guess, you know. Mm step will be finishing. Are we clear coating it? This is DIY? Yep. Alright, let's take it outside and clear coat. Look how beautiful the grain looks, right? Mm -hmm. Again, taking a little bit of time to chew your lumber at the store can pay big dividends, right? Because right. this is normal pine, you know, just standard pine but it had such differentiation in it looks really nice even the side grain and this by the way we wanted this detail right we wanted to show the the growth rings right yep so here are our spacers that make it very easy to reassemble the frame and get it ready and Elfida here will demonstrate. Like one of white, right? Yep. We're not going to take it apart. We don't have a space for it yet, but we don't want to disassemble it right now, but it is not a very lengthy process, wouldn't you agree? Right. We designed it to be easy to put together and take apart. And as you can see, very quickly, everything goes back together. And here we are again, if you make this as a normal bed, the only difference is that you will design it so the mattress will be inside the frame, right? As a day bed, you want the mattress to be on top. Correct? Incorrect? Correct. And that's how the cookie crumbles. And here is our completed day bed. Again, it's designed to be easy to move in and out of a room. We plan to have it as a permanent day bed in our guest room, right? Mm -hmm. But definitely you can make it as a bed that comes apart easily and gets put back together easily and have it in storage just when you have uh, company visiting. For us, again, we're going to use it as a day bed and of course as a sleeping area for when we enter, entertain people overnight. Well, friends, this is a $70 build, the material to build everything that you see here, except of the mattress and of course the bedding is $70 in, in wood and, and screws and such. 
you can build them using hand tools. We use our power tools because we have them and we need to finish quickly so we can edit the video and post it for you guys. But there are no difficult cuts here, right? Oh. It will definitely take some time. The, the joints for the legs will take some time if we don't have power tools. It took some time even with our power tools, so you know. But you can definitely do it just with a saw. This was not a very complex build. If you take your time, take your time selecting the wood so it has some character, as you can see here, if Atlas gets out of the way. We have very nice wood. I think the nice side is the other side, actually. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. Okay. It's got, if you, if you could see it, but you know, there's some interference that we have. Uh, but yeah, we have some color on this. Four really nice. Four-legged interference. So did we learn anything, ladies? Did we have any, any challenges with this? I think it was really very um, straightforward. Yeah, um, I think so, too. You know, we, we had planned for the dimensions that we wanted, and we purchased the right amount of wood, with one exception. And then two by fours that we have plenty of came to the rescue. Right. So we were able to utilize a piece of wood that we already had to make the, the make up what we were missing. And also, <clears throat> because it's a day bed, you don't want it to be bigger than a twin because then it will not look right as a day bed, right? Right. I mean, if you make something bigger, it will be a bed bed in a, in a bedroom. Mm -hmm. We are not putting this in a bedroom. That's why we need it to look like a day bed, right? We're going to put it in an office. Right. It's going to be functional as a couch once we get all the right uh, pillows on it. It's going to be functional as a couch and then can also be our guest uh, sleeping arrangement. Correct. Dual purpose. Dual purpose. Excellent. This is our episode for today. And as you can see, we have a nice functional uh, day bed. And we've shown you everything that you needed to see. We show you tips and tricks like we always do. And we hope you did enjoy this episode. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't hit the other button twice, share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to watch in future episodes of the Urban Homesteading channel. From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY, and Elpida, stay safe, friends.